Hi, we're going to do some data analysis here. I have some data from somebody's acceleration lab. No one in your class, um, but we have some data here. Uh, so we want to do some things. First of all, when we're presenting the data, we want to make sure we have the right number of decimal places. Um, we don't really need this many with the sign, but it doesn't matter. It's just a calculated value. However, all of our uncertainties should be one non-zero decimal place, and then our averages should be rounded to that same place, like so. Okay. Now we're interested in having a graph. I want my independent variable it to be the sine of the angle, and I'm going to have average acceleration on my graph. I can actually select both by using control and then selecting, and then I'm going to insert a nice scatter plot, making sure I connect the ones that does not have any lines connecting it. All right, and now I want to do some st stuff with this data set um, to make it look nice, and I'm going to start uh, by actually getting rid of the uh, little key there, the legend, that who needs that. Um, I'm not going to put on a whole lot of information. I do want to uh, stick in the sine theta. Uh, theta is um, a Q, which I'm then going to put into symbol font by selecting it and then in the home menu Maybe I'm not going to do that hit there. Let's try selecting it down here. And then in the home menu, I can change the font to symbol. OK, and now it's theta. I can also make that italic, because that's nice. And then for my um, vertical axis, I want that to read acceleration meters per second squared. And once again, I want to um, make that one superscript. So for that, I go in here and I do superscript. Hit OK. Ta da! It's superscript. OK. So chart tools, layout, start with error bars. And I want more error bars options right off the bat. I want vertical error bars, both plus and minus. All right, my ends line with a cap. I like that. Um, and I'm going to do some custom ones, so I need to specify the value. For the positive value, I want to take the uncertainty. And for the negative value, I also want to take the uncertainty. All right, then I say OK, and I close, and oh my gosh, I've got horizontal error bars as well as vertical ones. Who wants that? So I click on one of the horizontal ones that selects all of them, and I just use my delete key to get rid of them. Now notice that some of my error bars are bigger than others. If I want to see all of them, I can format this data series so that the markers are all tiny. Um, and I'm going to make them, uh, yeah, make them little, maybe I'll just make a circle. All right, I'm going to make them that. Um, and I'm going to make them little, and I'm going to make them black. Ta-da! All right, so hopefully that worked. Yes, I've got tiny little black dots with error bars. I would like to have a trend line, so I'm going to go to my trend line and more trend line options. And then I choose to display the equation on the chart. And then I'm going to do some stuff with this equation. Um, first of all, I gotta change this y to an a for acceleration, and better yet, I'm gonna make that italic. Um, I'm gonna change this x to the sine of the angle, and once again, that's q. And I'm going to let's put that into symbol font and italic, and ta-da. Um, in order to know what to do with my slope here, I need to know what my uncertainty is, and same with my y-intercept. So for that, I'm going to use the linest function. I'm going to move the whole graph over a little bit, 
so I've got room for this. To do the Lunast function, I'm going to select four boxes, and it doesn't matter where they are as long as there's nothing in them yet, okay? Uh, and there's no formulas already there. I'm going to type equals L-I-N-E-S-T for Linest, parentheses, I need my Y values, and it's very nice that it prompts you, it says known Y's, and it's even bold, so I know that's next, okay? Now known X's is in bold, so I select those. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can either go true or I can do one. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could have it say one, one. I could say true, true, whatever. Okay, now I have not hit return. What I'm going to do next is hit control, shift, enter. And you can see that all four boxes become filled. The top left box is the slope. The box right below, below that is the uncertainty in the slope. The top right box is the y-intercept, and the box right below that is the uncertainty in the y-intercept. Okay, so now that I know that, I can take my uncertainties and bring them down to one non-zero digit, just like with my um, standard deviations, and then these values, just like the averages, I'm going to bring them down so that they are in the same place. And now I know what to do with my slope and y-intercept. I'm actually going to put parentheses around the slope just for convenience sake. And it's not 11.214, it's 11.2 plus or minus 0.7. Alright, so how do I get plus or minus? I gotta go to the insert menu, choose symbol. I happen to have used it recently so it's down here, but if I can't find that I actually have to go through and search through all the symbols to see if I can find a plus minus. Ah, there it is. I select it, I say insert, I close this box. So 11.2 plus or minus 0 0.7, and this is in meters per second squared. Close the parentheses. If I want to make that superscript, which I do, I need to select it. I'm just actually using the shift key and the arrow keys in order to select. And I can go to the font menu. I gotta click on this little corner thing like you saw before. Superscript, okay. All right, then my y-intercept, this is really gonna be 0.5, plus or minus, I gotta insert a symbol. Since I've used it recently, this should show up as in my recently used symbols. Click insert close and it's going to be 0.1 and the units for this are also meters per second squared. Um, that's it. it doesn't usually work out that way, it just happens to work out that way because sine of an angle does not have any units. When there's no units, then you don't have to worry about them. Isn't that nice? So this gives us the total equation for the best fit line, the trend line for this data. It's not that great. 11.2, we were hoping for 9.8 with this. Uh, and even if you subtract 0.7, you still get 10.5, which is still not equal to 9.8. All right, I hope that clears up your questions and certainly ask me if you have any more questions.